We have no minutes to approve tonight. We canceled our joint meeting with the uh, Finance Committee, which proves to be a wise decision. Yeah. Um, we were going to review our select board. Yeah, I'm just gonna, you have copies of it already, but I want to get mine. Which I gave it to you last week, so it should be in your binder. Going backwards. In the binder. Storm and work, other forms, key access, charter. Confidential. Anybody found it yet? Not yet. I didn't see it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what we didn't do? We have open time for the public tonight? No, no. I think so. <coughs> no. They all left. Hmm. I know. He said everybody left. He didn't even pay any attention. Yeah. I don't find our budget. Right now, is this in here? What? Yes, that's it. Where'd you find it? Oh, here. It's in the loose. It's loose in the oh, front. Loose. Loose in the front. Ma'am, I just want to make sure you're not sitting here waiting for something. Are you here for me a purpose? You're certainly welcome to listen to us. Oh, okay. Keep drinking. Oh, that's Miss Sarah? Yeah. Oh, okay. Fingers. I, I didn't want to make you sit there for something that was coming up later. <laughs> this is our general government budget. Yep. Which now comes to. I don't know. Where's the one? It's the office. It's just far away. Unless you took it home. Okay. Other one is even Okay. Here we go. Our, our selectman's budget is now $125,000. What? No, wait a minute. No, 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 no. <laughs> no I'm on the wrong page. Your, your budget, your selectman's budget is actually several lines. You have all of these lines are lines that I budget. So uh, 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 starting with page one. And they're all separate lines in the budget. All right, so starting with highlighted though. Which ones you're talking about? No, they're they're all okay, just, starting just page one. Okay. Yeah, starting page one. Starting page one. We have general selections expenses two thousand one hundred and ninety dollars. Office supplies, dues, training. Anybody have a problem with that? That is level funded from last year. We do the CDL drug testing. That doesn't come out of the departments. What doesn't? CDL drug CDL. test. No, CDL drug testing comes out of CDL drug testing. That's a separate. It comes line. out of our budget. Are no, it's a separate line. See, these are all separate lines in the budget. Is what I'm saying. But is that part of our general government? Yes, it's That's in general our government. Administrative expenses. It's in general government. Commercial driver's license. Mm -hmm. But like the highway department doesn't pay for their CDL. CDL. There's a separate line for CDL drug testing. There and has been since now, I've been here. And we've now shepherded that under us. Internet service, three accounts, highway, police, town hall. Now, this account last year was 1320. <clears throat> the increase represents uh, $660, and that's because we have a, an additional internet account at $55 a month. Oh, because we've got... Now we have one at the, at the old town hall and one here. $500 for email hosting, updates to the website and calendar. Yes, we have our outside... Uh, email hosting through Jagfly. That cost is $160 a year. The remaining balance is for any updates that we do our, to our website or our calendar. Um, John Fitzpatrick is our uh, webmaster. He's still doing that gratis. But if we have to make design changes to the website, he has a designer that we use. It's, you know, like 40 bucks an hour or Isn't something. But the, uh, uh, we've always kept it separate because we don't carry our web page through the same IT provider, or we don't. We're not hosting it through IBS or the town. Mm -hmm. We're hosting it through a separate, a separate company. So it's been it, again that that was here when I started. Administrative expenses. Why do we have office supplies there and office supplies under expenses? Uh, well, because I, I don't know when this came about. Because when I started doing administrative expenses. I had only started doing just my travel costs, professional development dues for myself personally. Then over the last couple years, um, Reggie has asked if she could also be part of STAM, so there's dues for that. Um, we've paid the personnel, poly the, uh, the Mass Municipal Personnel Association dues, which were $200 out of this account. Um, we started buying, like, if, if it's my office supply, in my office it gets charged this, or if Reggie is, if it's more tending toward my office, it gets charged to this. If it's a general selectman's expense, like your tapes or things to do with your recorder, that gets charged to selectman. 
So I've just been trying to keep up with the budget because each year it's like more stuff's getting transferred over here. So the original intent, um, I mean, I'm still, I, you know, I, I still go to trainings. I just, if I don't have money, I just don't go at the end of the year. But so mm -hmm. there, it does represent an increase because Reggie, as I said, had, has asked to be part of um, some professional development training and um, with that would mean travel and also dues. What's the TA and the? TA and AA. That's me and Reggie. TA, AA. AA is no. assistant. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then we have postage for 12. Is that our? That's not photocopier. That's our postage. Photocopier. Photocopier. Oh, oh, photocopier. Yeah, that's, um, that is our, the photocopier line I increased, and I'll tell you why, um, and you can make a decision. Um, this is for the, the main photocopier, the copy machine that's in the staff room and all the paper that um, is used in that particular machine. That's how it used to be at the old town hall. Um, what has been happening more and more is the offices are just taking the paper from the copy room instead of buying paper through their budgets. So my budget for the copier costs have gone up because now I'm buying all the paper for all of the offices. I mean, I, I can't say for certain that every single one is using them, but for the most part, nobody's buying paper. Everyone's just taking it from the copy room. Isn't there a funding line for that in their departments? In their department budgets, I do not know the answer to that question. Well, then we want to call their department budgets right. for photocopy paper and remove those items from their budget. It would probably be under office supplies, but yeah. And and the other reason there's also another the 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 increase. So that's so that's part of it. So more paper, the cost of paper has gone up considerably, and I do have a little extra in there because right now we have, as I said, one copy machine, main copy machine in the staff room. Um, we have a meeting room upstairs and we have this meeting room down here plus we're going to have that extension. I don't know what the seniors have for a copy machine but we really need to have a second copy machine. Now the town accountant's office just received a copy machine from Ed that was on an old lease that he decided not to renew and they took it and are using it in their office but it's a scanner, a copy machine, a fax, a stapler and I had asked David Kielsen if we could use that upstairs as a shared copier in the, in the meeting room because there's people meeting upstairs and if they have to make one or two copies they have to come downstairs. And they are not, don't seem to be willing to do that. Does that make sense to keep an eye on things? I was just going to say, I don't think we're going to give somebody an extra copier. Right? Yeah, that's good in the budget this year. I don't think that's 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 well, is there any chance that you would be willing to compel the accountant's office to share the larger copy. I don't understand why they can basically just get a copier from someone else and put it in their office and use it like a printer when we need a second copier in the building. That wasn't David Kielsen's decision, was it? Do we want to request, I, I mean, I, are you saying leave it available for whoever's using that? Yes, I'm, I'm suggesting that we don't put it in the accounts office, that we put it either in the hallway or the meeting room across the hall. Well, Probably the meeting room across the hall because we'd, we want to have it connected to the server so it can be a network copier. Yeah, do we want everybody to have access to it to this machine? We only, I was only thinking people that would be meeting in the second meeting room and the veterans officer. But the veterans know. officer doesn't have but it. It's like a public area. Anyone could use it. Well, I'm saying because we used to have that problem over in the, at one point in time, remember you had to enter your code in order to get it. We, we could probably put codes on it. It's the no. same type of copier that we have in the main room. It's just a smaller version of it. We used to have, when, when I first you used to have to put codes in in order right. to, so the planning board had a code so you knew it got charged to the planning board yep. and that sort of thing. But I just, it's, it's becoming like a tug of war because they feel like they're going to use it for a printer. And my feeling is they also, they already also have three printers in their office. So. My, my concern is that, you know, there's no increased number of people working in this building from the old town hall. So I don't think we really need another second printer. Just well, the, the distance. The people walking downstairs, but yeah. still, I don't know. In yes. Economy, I don't think that warrants another copy. It's not for the staff, though. I want to be clear on that. It's for the for the boards and committees. Uh, those being 20 boards and committees, we have meeting. Some of them, I shouldn't yeah, say the majority, year, but working upstairs. Them. They don't have. I mean, if somebody's in for a planning board hearing or whatnot, they have to go all the way to the other end well, of the we building. We have planning board meetings in this building. What did you do for copies? We have no copies. <laughs> <laughs> so we I guess hand, that's an advantage then. We hand. <laughs> copied everything. We were still using copy paper. 
There was okay. no, there was no copier in the Yeah, there meeting over here, the planning board, conservation, conservation committee, There's all no the land copier use. in this building. When they were meeting in this building. Lucky we had heat sometimes. Well, what about okay. encouraging the other copier to come out for more? I mean, I can understand. I can play. understand David's concern about having access to the public, you know, or open so that anybody can get to it. I don't know. If they, anybody got any strong feelings one way or another? So uh, it's a benefit to the accountant's office. And it doesn't mean anything. It's just it's an old copy they got. And it's got a, a whiz bang thing to it. But it's it's you shouldn't it's have benefits, this. but to the board, it would benefit all the. It's community. in my opinion, it's a it's a bigger. Um, you know, it's it's more than what they need for what they're doing, and, and it could benefit the rest of the staff and boards and committees, and I feel like um, that's it. There's no control of it upstairs, though. All right, well, here, let's not... We could put it down into, you know, this area. Do, do, yeah, but you're not going to take it away from them since you got it. Um, at least my opinion. Right. Um, does anybody have a strong opinion one way or another? Does anybody want to approach David about sharing the machine? Oh, we can just talk to David. I don't think it's a big issue. But the bigger I, I, issue is, is, is that we're, because the budget being so tight is that if all the other departments in the town hall are not spending their, their, their office supply money on their office supplies, but then taking the paper we're paying and out of our budget, what are they doing with their money? Well, that's what we well, we, you have to remember you have cut the expense budgets considerably over the last several years. So, I mean, each year, you know, we've yeah, cut the problem is going to town. Everybody gets cut. So it's yeah, you're right. right. No, everyone has. But, I mean, the problem is going to town meeting and saying, well, their budget has been cut and the select month's budget has gone up because we're buying paper for everybody. I mean, we got to get a handle on it. And that's one of the things we, we've, we've got to get a handle on our own copy here. Because these, we waste a ton of paper between the five of us. Yeah, it's becoming much more expensive to copy because of the cost of paper has gone up considerably. As I said, when I started, it was like $20 a case, now it's up to 30 And we probably go through 40 or 50 cases a year at least, at oh, least, yeah. not more. All right, so, All right, so, I, so I can reduce it to, um, I can't level fund it because I am spending more, but I can take that second copier out and just put it back down to, say, like 2800 I think that would be reasonable for the paper. Does that sound okay? Yeah. All right. Okay. Postage twelve thousand. Yeah. Are we buying all the postage for the town? Yes. That or that's a postage line. That's a line. But yes. It, but for every, all but, postage. But does each department get charged against that line? Only the departments that use the postage machine, and and that's also the PO boxes. So and that's all the. Have you looked into dumping the PO boxes now that we, we have? I have a whole folder on my PO box project, but there are many departments who do not want to depart with their P.O. boxes. Are well. they paying for the P.O. boxes out of their lines? Um, oh, well, let me double check that. Yeah, I'm not sure. Some departments do budget. I, I, yeah, well, the, this used to be in Chrissy's budget, the postage machine, but now because the postage is um, in the staff meeting room, it's not, it used to be in the treasurer's budget. budget. Is there a control on that postage meter? <laughs> you have to, you, we can print reports off it. You have to put in your department code, yes. So Yes, you have to have a code, you have to put it in, and we do reports periodically, but I did it, I started keeping track because I didn't know if at some point you'd want to get to some kind of department level budget where, you know, you're actually charging departments for their accessory costs, um, so we do, we did break it up by department and we do have a report that we get periodically. But some departments, like I think the fire department, maybe one, I don't know, there's some departments who just go buy postage still, like, and you, you buy stamps. And, and the Council on Aging does that, although when they're in this building, that might change, too. But. You raised the point about uh, Thomas wants to be able to tell you how to post it. You can put it if you're doing uh, medical stuff for electronic or not. You might have to do that manual process. Yeah, well, we're not here talking about your budget. I'm just well, kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> and my, and my office is converted to faxing everything. They don't, they don't mail anything anymore. Yeah. We we don't mail very much. We uh, I mean the things that are in the postage account are the tax bills, the um, the street lists, the water bills I think are in there. Um, you know there's there's those kinds of bills. But in terms of general department, like for our department, we mail very little. We scan and email most things. Legal. Where did we spend this year? Legal so far, we're only at about 50% or less, actually, but we've only gotten billed through December. We're, we're on target. Okay, um, so the 30 is a relatively secure figure? The only reason that that might not be enough is if we were to make any kind of settlement. 
Like we, the first year that I was here, you actually had a small legal settlement that we did settle out of legal fees. Um, but if you, if just for general expenses, um, we should be okay again, uh, you know, depending on this cable, if this cable contract <laughs> wraps up in FY11 and doesn't go into FY12. Um, but for, for what I expect on the horizon right now, that should be sufficient. The Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, that I think used to be a planning board as well. Since I've been here, it's had its own line. And that is their, um, their assessment. Barnes Aquifer, I seem to remember that too. And the Barnes Aquifer is the same thing. They get an annual assessment for, um, for their committee that we did, we've shorted them the last couple of years. I, when you did a um, expense budget cut at one point, it was 19% and I cut that line as well. And then I applied for a waiver and they gave us a waiver for two years, but now they're saying we need to give them the 2000 again. Get to that. that is your, um, you have representation on the Barnes Aquifer Protection Committee and you get a consultant from PVPC that organizes, facilitates, and manages that committee. Right, they deal with anything that has to do with the Barnes Aquifer. They meet, I think they meet monthly. Right now your representatives are Joe Slattery and Jim Labrie. Um, Joe hasn't been going for some time, but Jim has been attending the meetings. Custodian expenses for taking care of this place. So this is where I had put in the contract. And I honestly think that if you're willing to consider still putting something in there, I, I can get something for 10000 I mean, we could do it for half. But um, the other thing you could consider is trying to hold off until the end of this year, which and I think Joe's indicated he's going to retire. And then you could just do half a year, like starting January 1st. I mean, that would be another suggestion. Well, we should carry, well I, I, frankly, I think we should carry something in that line. Well, we have a wage line for Joe. That's no, not no, no, right. I'm right. This is just the, right, for the contract. And I, I actually got, um, I met with another company who gave me a quote for the un, under 5,000, which means we wouldn't have to bid it out. Um, and, and it was a good, you know, it would be once a week. Um, so I guess it just gave me the thought that you probably could get something for, you know, under 10000 but it's just going to be a limited service. But that, is, I really think, is all you need right now while Joe's still here. Once a week, um, Ford? Yeah, the major Ford. stuff. Like once or twice a week, um, it would be floors, the stainless, the window, uh, the, you know, window sills. Um, I can't remember, it's the bathrooms, full cleaning of the bathrooms. Yeah, 5000 for a year? Yeah. Um, it was like about four hundred dollars a month, so forty-eight hundred for an entire so month. I that, mean, the year. Change that twenty down to something. Well, I was wondering, you know, we were talking about the custodians of more experienced systems here. Is there a way to have people in town who already have the equipment come over here and do the floor storage too? But isn't that in town? Or well, I think for the major things, we're talking about that. But this is just a routine maintenance on a weekly basis, not your ma major yeah. floor washings or anything. So else. when would they come in? Probably, we, have, we haven't worked out the details of that. Right. There would be a, it's it would, kind of complicated. Yeah, we'd have a contract with them, and in the contract, it specifies that we'd specify their hours, um, you know, who, what kind of personnel would be allowed to come. They all have to be bonded and insured and whatnot. I mean, we'd have a contract. There would be a manager of the team. Yeah, yeah. there would be somebody that, you know, something. Maybe talking about the school employees coming in to do the... Lord and we work. right, and we've talked about that kind of a thing on an annual basis: the buffing, the strip buffing, and waxing. Mm -hmm. um, I think that 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 wouldn't be part of this contract that you're what I'm talking about right now. That that would, like Mike said, just be general maintenance. Um, yeah, they just they dry mop them or maybe wet mop them once a week. They don't buff them and. Um, it might it might actually be a hard buff, like they can spray it with like a hard buff, but it's not the labor intensive floor treatment we'd have to do once a year. So what is the board's pleasure? There's 20 in that line now. We're told we could do it for less than 10. What do you want to carry in there? 15. I would say go medium. 15. 7,500. I was going to answer. 7,500. She said she could do it for less than 5, I think 000. we can do it for 7,500. I do. 75. So 75? You guys okay? Or they're okay. Or yes. Is that right? <coughs> I think they're short. Sure. But we're not going to. Did you get bids for under ten? 
Well, I got, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that I got about 20 to 25 for two to, for like three or more days a week. If we, cu if we keep cutting back the time, if we only did one or two days a week, we could definitely do it for, for that. But the place deteriorate if we only do it? One or two days a week. I think because Joe still work. Joe is still working. You know, for us, five. Well, not five hours because he's spending some time at the police station. But he still is here on a daily basis for at least two to three hours. And he's actually, you know, sectioning off the building and doing a little bit every day. Right. Um, so I think with the combination of the two, we could do it. I don't think we would lose anything for the building. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm I'm saying, you know, to play out for FY12 because Joe has said he's going to retire at some point, which may be an FY12. So at some point, we may need to go into a, a higher level of maintenance. But with Joe here, I think we'll be OK for a while. Uh, I'm Good. So you, you think maybe 7,500 is a little short then for budget that? Yeah, we aren't hiring anything right now, so the no. further we get I mean, I have a quote already for 48. So I know I, but it's one day a week if we want more. You know, and it's the basic services, but it's pretty comprehensive. So I think we could definitely do it for. Yeah, just be one day a week, but it'd be like five, uh, four or five hours, I think, of cleaning. Can you give me an idea what the headcount is going to be? No, we haven't gotten a sense of that. It's it's limited still. I, I mean, I hopefully once we have our grand opening, more people will. <laughs> building maintenance a thousand bucks, which seems. Um, that's our. That's that building maintenance in general is an account you created. Uh, let's see. I guess an FY10. And we've carried that money. We haven't carried it, meaning we haven't carried it forward, but each year we've been putting a 1000 but we never spend it because it's sort of um, unclear what it's for. So it's just. Just flush it out. <laughs> Don't say that. Over 8000 Yeah, that's, I've level funded that, and I'm in hope, hope that's going to um, possibly go down slightly this year because we'd, we'd lost a few of our phone. We dropped a few of our phone lines and consolidated phone and fax lines, um, but I'd like to leave it level funded for now. Police Department Gas and Electric for 20 for across the street for gas and electric? Yeah, for the police department and the town hall, I was really, I'm still really in the dark. I did go back and look at the bills, but the period of time that we got for this bill, we did have a bill um, before we moved in as they started increasing the heat, um, but it's really hard to tell a trend at this point. So what I did is I just kind of flip flopped them because the town hall, uh, where the police station is, a portion of that has been somewhat mothballed. It's been, the temperature has been lowered. So I'm hoping we can do it with the 20. And then I brought the 23 to here. And I mean, we're told this is a highly energy efficient building. So that's about what we were doing it for before when just the Council on Aging was here. So. And this is what we're thinking about. We should come up with an official designation for that other building so that we know when we're talking about something, which one, which one we're talking about. Right. Well, actually, what I did is I changed them to police department and town hall because that's really what that so is that's now. that's now the police department only, and this is town hall. Town hall, yeah. Okay. That's how I did it in the budget terms so people would be clear. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So wait a minute. The police department is in the basement. Yeah, but it's, we're now calling the whole building the police department. That's in the basement. Wants you to call it basement. Basement level. <laughs> um, so the same with building expenses. I basically printed out um, a detail of the building expenses for the police, for the town hall, the old town hall from last year, half a year. And I, I broke it down and came up with those, um, with those numbers. They, they amount to, um, let me just give you the detail. The annual garbage pickup is 1520 the highway department, that's what we're charged from the highway department for trash pickup. We're charged $380 a quarter. I did ask Ed if we were going to be charged for both buildings, and he said no. We would only, it'd be the same as it is now, which I think we're only being charged for one. Our department is billing us. Yeah. I, well, I, I'm kind of assuming it's because it's an enterprise fund, so he probably... Oh, they, oh, they're doing it as part of the transfer station. Oh, I would they're assume. Doing it. it's not the highway department. They're wearing, Correct. They're yes. Wearing their transfer the, I mean, that's what I assume. It's not clear. It just says trash okay. pickup, but I assume it's money. It's like um, it's fees different. that are for the transfer station. Okay. All right. um, Two hundred dollars for water, which is the annual use at the old town hall. They get the minimum cost usually, which is forty-five to fifty dollars. Um, fire control and the fire extinguishers inspections 
are about 280 a year, assuming they keep all of the fire extinguishers in place. And last year, um, or for the first half of this year, in electric, plumbing, and heating, miscellaneous repairs and maintenance, we had $1,100. And then $100 for the carpet cleaning, so, which is half of what we paid because they'll only have to clean the downstairs, presumably. So I came up with um, 3300 Now that's something, again, I'm not sure. I'm doing this budget. I haven't spoken to the chief. I assume he's not doing a budget for the building, but at some point, we need to coordinate and find out. But I, I pres he hasn't submitted a budget yet, so I'm not sure. But I don't believe that he hasn't t told me that he's budgeting anything. So he would do it for the building. Well, and to just to move this along, does, mm -hmm. and we step it up a little. Police department building expenses. Oh, you just did that. Town hall building expenses. Now that's here. That's here. And I and I ran those. I ran over those with you a couple weeks those ago. Those are the contract I'm, prices. Those are all the contracts. The, it's everything from it's everything that I could think of. Dehumidifier, lights. Uh, boiler contract, the HVAC or the HVAC contract, um, the fire, the inspection for the elevator, the fire extinguishers, the fire alarm annual maintenance, the fire alarm. We have a wet and dry uh, fire suppression system that needs to be maintained annually, and the fire alarm monitoring, which is $300 a year, net starting half of next year. So I only put in half, um, and that collectively came up to the. 9915. <laughs> the, the, the town reports, do we really need to print 350 copies? Well, we used to print 500. Um, so so 2,000 is, is we, last year I think we only got to print 300 and something. We've been going down every year. Um, that's entirely up to you. You have to produce an annual report. It doesn't say how many copies you have to print legally or... We put it on our website. We put it on our website. And, What's the minimum number of hard copies that we can buy? I would say, well, I don't know in terms of, like, if we enter a contract, I'm thinking probably 100 to make it cost effective. Well, and I think, I think that it would be most um, effective to have enough to at least dis to distribute at town meeting because we put the warrant and everything in it, so we try to distribute it at town meeting in lieu of the copies. So that would be more, 200 would be more than enough for About 200, I think, would be plenty. Two hundred sounds too many of those going to waste. Make a motion. Two hundred. That can bad. Two hundred copies. Okay. Um, I don't know how much I, ultimately that's going to yeah. cost, but I'll do the math and we'll figure it out. We're, we're actually going to be getting bids soon for this year, so we can get a better sense of that. I'm going to do something about a cover for the picture or something. Maybe. And that's where you want to do some expense too. It's more cost prohibitive unless you want to do black and white, which doesn't come out as yeah. as nice. Um, it would be nice if we had the new town hall on it, but I would, you know, if we could. I think something like North, just have some of the, the kids over there do black and white drawings of the, the cover and just do it as a project if we have to for the uh, How soon do you need to cover art? Uh, Reggie's working on the report now, so I would say within a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. Something like that. You want to take it today. Uh -huh. I'm going to call Collins and ask the art teacher if we can get some kids together and draw a picture for what they want on the town meeting. Mm -hmm. You try. Okay. Out of contract, put it within our district. How about te technology? What are we buying for? Four computers? Um, oh, and I also wanted to give you these. Um, David had asked me about these last week, so I made copies for you and, and the quotes. This is IBS's um, analysis of our system. So all of the recommendations that I put into the budget came out of this report. And these are the, bud these are the quotes. Thank you. There's actually two separate Here's the paper problem that we have. Mm -hmm. Well, I just kind of wanted you to at least have well, them. Well, we got to spin the room around. These are two different things. So you just pass them. Right, we're going to spin the room around. Yes, we are going to. Um, so, the, yes, the equipment budget contains four new computers, a wireless access point, and I think it... I did not include the external hard drive. Yeah, there's one that's got one that's stapled that's two page and one that's just a single page. In five minutes you won't need them anyway, so <laughs> but just so you can see. So um, those are the quotes that we got, and they are um, the computers themselves, as you can see in the report, um, are very old. 
They're the oldest computers we have. I think one goes back to 2004. And for the most part, they're all running on um, not enough memory for the processes that they're trying to, to do. Like, for instance, David and Joyce have antiquated computers, and they're running SoftWrite, which is a software program. They're able to do it, but it's, it's slow and cumbersome than um, if they had a newer computer. So over the last year and a half to two years, we've progressively updated everybody's, and we only have four left to do. So we could phase them in. I did put them all in this year's budget, but we certainly could, um, we, you know, we could do two this year and two next year if you want to try to do that. How much are there, please? Well, four of them cost 38, they're about a so thousand bucks. Mm -hmm. this so you save a couple thousand dollars. Yeah. This says the quote expires on March 9th. Yeah, that's, I mean, yeah, we'll, we might have to get a new quote. I just got that for so lunch. Do you want to replace all four computers or do you want to replace a segment of two? Two in the accountant's office and then wait for the assessors and Board of Health? The Board of Health computer is a secondary computer that the, the clerk was using and actually she's now resigned, so she's not going to be here anymore. So, um, so I think that one we could definitely wait on. Lori's is the first, was the newest refurbished computer we had originally when we started the replacement process. So that's why she was the last to be replaced. But hers is, it was a refurbished computer and it's pretty old at this point. So um, we've got it running good. She says it's running good. So, and she's running Vision, which is a, um, um, you know, a software on it. But, but it's old and functioning. Why do you have to replace it? Well, there's always the potential that it could so crash. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, and, and if it was a memory issue, I would be, Reggie was having a serious memory issue problem. We had to replace hers immediately because she was constantly getting messages. She didn't have enough memory process to, to move things. Um, but I don't believe that's happening with these other computers. Are we okay so. to get to phase two and we wait for two? That's with, with the board's pleasure. I, I just, I'm always, and I just want to voice this as we go through the budgetary process. Oh, it's just 500 bucks. Oh, it's just this. Oh, it's just that. Mm -hmm. And it, all the O's just sort of end up adding up to a lot. What, what, I, what I would usually say is, what, I do, what would I do if this was home? Right. And, and we know there's a budgetary cut coming in on those, at least 7%. So I, I, I recognize that they may be a new form of machines. But I would be hesitant to spend any more money than we absolutely have to this year. And we have these expenses for the new town hall. So going out and buying more computers at this time might be an expense that we can't afford. That's all I'm going to say. It's just, it's just tight. Are you guys yeah. <coughs> fine with that? Do it for now and two now? Mm -hmm. Now and two later. Yep. And if we change your mind, get your request two now and two later. Okay. And the block time for IT support, that's. The block time for IT support is really going to cost less than it costs now because basically we're just prepaying for, for service and then we get a discount of $15 an hour for every hour. So because we're a, city, a municipality, we're, we're appropriating that money anyway. We might as well give it to them and save money. It's not more money than we would spend. It's just giving it to them on a prepay basis. And that's what they call it a block time purchase. And then we have Yeah, um, I think they're both going to go up. <coughs> Workers comp, we've had a significant number of claims. Our claims experience is, is on the poor side. I'm going to try to get out. Uh, we got out of Mega, which I think was the best thing. Um, we have a great company right now, but it doesn't change our claims experience. And um, the insurance general, I think, uh, we're going to see an increase in premiums because we had the Norris School listed with the wrong square footage. Um, it was it was off by 32,000 square feet, so we have to pay $3,600 more a year for that, and then we'll have a significant increase in the um, in this square footage of this building. We only have it listed right now at 7,316,000, so I expect that to be another two two thousand. Well, this building's always been on there. It's always been on there, but they only had covered the 7,300, which I assume was just the part of the building that was being occupied or utilized. I reviewed all the pro the statement of properties list this year against um, some other records I had had for the energy, and that's how we determined that the square footages were off. I, I don't know when they got that way. They've been like that since. So the um, real square footage here is what? 
the square footage in this building is now, I think, 16,062 or something. But on the, on the statement of values last year, we only had this building listed at 7,300. And Norris, we had at 32, and it's actually 67,000 square feet. I think Norris might have been pre-addition, and nobody caught it. No, because, yeah, because it's just on the, um, on the insurance. Who's a new cop here? Who's a new cop here? Oh, um, we're using Trident. Trident. Well, and w w where do we have such loss experience? Who's, who's been getting hurt? Well, it's not, um, we don't have significant, um, we have a lot of medical-only claims or, or short-term claims, but we've had a couple long-term claims this last couple of years with surgeries and instances mostly at the school. I mean, most of our workers, come, well, highway department and school, I would say. They should come in and do a class. We, we really have, we haven't had, and this is one of the department heads' complaints, and that's why we're going to try to go to Maya this year. We haven't really had any kind of loss control um, trainings or anything with, with the recent insurance companies. Who's, you know, and, and someone needs to look at the, who's signing, you know, that these are comp injuries that happen, you know. Well, they, have a, they, they sign off, there's a witness statement that's done, and the insurance company all calls to verify that, you know, the proper paperwork's been filled out. If they have any questions, there have been a couple investigations, um, and then they always have the right to send somebody to their own private um, person. I don't know if that's ever been done. So, I mean, the other, the other piece of the that general... Seems, I, I, because that, it seems, I, we don't, I was not aware that we were having trouble. trouble. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's, I mean, I, in, in the big scheme of things, I don't know if it's any more than any other municipality, but in, in our, you know, population, it is. Could we ask for a, a listing about those claims that are pending? I have a claims experience. I think we need to have to take a look at that. On your okay. That would probably be right up your alley, a right? confidential yeah. document. <laughs> and also, um, on the general insurance, um, I just want to note that we do have some claims against that that may need to be settled. So I'm not sure how that, well, I mean. We still have some pending, yeah. Right, some liabilities. Right. All right, um, any questions on the budget, gentlemen? Yeah. Ladies? <coughs> so next week, the finance committee is coming in? No. Oh, two, the 29th. <coughs> okay. Um, we have a payroll warrant. Payroll warrant. P11-38 for the $246.19. So move to approve. Hang on one second. Let me just make sure. Okay. Okay. So there's a motion. Is there a second? Mm -hmm. <coughs> second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The, he did Chief leave? Declare the ambulance surplus? He did leave. He had his radio in his hand as if he was responding. Yeah, so the ambulance um, is, there's an, a sec, the second ambulance. The Chief would like to advertise it. And so are we going to use that same service again? No, we're going to, um, we're not going to do it on a public auction. We're just going to do it on a bid. We're just going to put it in the newspaper and on the website probably. <coughs> we were, but I think there may be some local people that are interested. I mean, we could do both. It's the other service is free, but the the situation with that is that people have to travel to pick it up, and I mean, I, I'm comfortable with whatever you want to do. I mean, we, Steve had just said to do it in the newspaper, but we could do whatever you so choose. You declare it, and you decide how it's. What did we put on that the last time? I forget. We, we did. We, we had two pieces of surplus tr uh, equipment we put on Muni bid. Yeah, but what equipment was it? I forget. Was it highway? No, fire it, was it was fire department. Rush truck. Yeah, it was. It was rush truck. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was just well, some. Well, by the way, Ed picked up a new grader. Oh, he did. Yeah. What's the board's pleasure about advertising this? Put it in a local yeah. paper, put it on a service that we used the last time, and we got a decent bid the last time. That would go to the way we went last time. Is there any downside? You serve, you serve us, I think. Hmm? As long as we got a good response last time, you serve us. Uh, and again, we can do both, but 
I mean, advertising it costs us money, and if, mm. if someone has some local <coughs> interest, that almost seems more reason to put it on. But what's the difference if it's declared surplus and how we treat it? We have to declare it surplus so that it can be sold. Right. So then it's <coughs> then it's how it's sold. It's how right. It's sold. Well, there's a process in the bylaw that says with once the department head deems it to be surplus, then the board reviews it and, and confirms that, and then it actually identifies how you what you have to do in the bylaw. So we also have to follow the bylaw, which is post in five places and advertise in a newspaper of local circulation. So we do that piece, and then we do whatever additionally you want to do. So we have to buy the bylaw advertise anyway, locally. No, no, because he got a good bid the last time. That's yeah. all I'm thinking about. Why would we not yeah. follow the same bid process? Or just do the same thing. So is there a motion to do that? So move. Do the same thing. So the motion, does the motion include declaring the ambulance surplus? Yes. A move to declare the ambulance surplus and further to advertise it in the same manner that we did with the previous second sale. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, upcoming events we already started talking about March 29th is now the <coughs> charter hearing questions to come if you want town council there. I think that's yes. a good idea. Uh, Absolutely. All right, he pencils it in at, our, mm -hmm. at his suggestion and we will send him a letter asking that he attend. He is going to send us a letter of our options anyway. Um, and at that meeting you will have your I would assume we would go proceed by a discussion amongst ourselves in deciding whether or not we think they're in violation of their contract. Should and we start early that night so we could, we could uh, have a caucus before? Can't caucus. You have, as, as, of, as of now, you have not made up your mind. Hmm. Um, so this is all on the 29th. Yes. And is this something that you want a charter representative or not? Uh, Tom had asked me on his way out the door. Or is that something I, I should check with Bill? I think we should just tell them that we're going to discuss that, that and if they wish to attend, we're not requiring them. Okay. When do they, how long do they have to respond after we make a decision? I think uh, Tom Council said that's what's going to be in his letter. Okay. All right. What, what, the, next, what the steps are to... <coughs> so the 29th isn't going to be about negotiation or... Well, we suggested that we were going to negotiate. Yeah. Which means they would have to be here. Which means they should be. If, yeah. But again, it's up to them. <laughs> Talk about the whole... whole package. Yeah, maybe Bill license. will make a recommendation, yeah. I mean, I think that... I just want to say for the record, one of the delays in process in, in getting moved forward with the contract is because we're still uncomfortable with these terms. Right. They're the same terms. <laughs> we started that a year ago. Yeah, we did, and so we're, we're, just, we're just finishing up the old contract. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. no. And am I'm I just this? Oops. Yep. Here at some point. Yeah, you're ready for me. Okay. Oh, I passed it out at that Excel spreadsheet. Oh, can we come? Can we just finish up this and then? Sure. Um, we got annual town caucus March 24th. Is that just an announcement for purposes? Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, and then, yep. 7 o'clock here, I would assume. Right? Yes, yes, 7 o'clock downstairs. And we have a master planning meeting downstairs. Upstairs. Yeah, it'll be um, here. here in the meeting room. Yeah, downstairs here. Um, um, okay, so, yes. Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> just one of the things that we have been discussing here is the relative rate of reimbursements to people and we have agreed at, at this point at least to use the federal guidelines which is 51 cents per a mile mm -hmm. driven or for cars used for okay. 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 so just a curiosity in light of the fact that gasoline prices have been going up I put out that spreadsheet that you can see there and the gasoline at different prices and driving at different miles a couple of miles could be over a week could be over a month and I did arrange the gasoline price is three dollars, three dollars and fifty cents a gallon, and then four dollars a gallon. It's my <coughs> observation that right now gas is settling around three fifty around here. It, prior to this, it was closer to three. Nonetheless, if you look at the highlighted sections, that's four hundred miles driven under those conditions, and you'll see the total reimbursement less the cost of the gasoline itself and then the cash that would be left over under those reimbursement terms. So the difference <coughs> between $3 and $4 driving 400 miles is about $26 cash that you would not have. You would have to have given to the gas station. 
So, just in light of what we've been talking about here, about this notion of fairness mm -hmm. and those kinds of things, um, and two hundred dollars a month as a stipend, that was one of the terms that was passed out. I don't really see how, in all fairness, we could yield to that request. You think that your analysis, fifty-one cents, is, is adequate? Based on those terms, exactly. Now, I've obviously made some assumption there. What is a fixed cost? You have to pay excise tax. That was brought up, and registrations, I think, were brought up. And we heard from folks who were looking to rent their car to the town. They pay the same if the car sits or is used. I broke it up into fixed cost and variable costs. My impression is 51 cents for a limited amount of mileage for someone who doesn't have to respond to emergencies is adequate. <coughs> there you go. So as, that is some? As, as for the building inspector, he's not going from the town hall to someplace and back and not looking at anything in the road. He's going around town as his, his job as enforcement. So he's a, he does a little bit more, and I think that's where the stipend comes in. That his, because he's actually, as he's driving around, he's looking around town looking for a roof that's in town that's going to run on and dump shingles someplace. Right. Like that. Yeah. This or is not an analysis about stipends, really. This is simply analysis of what the impact is right. of a rise in gasoline prices on somebody's reimbursement for mileage. Right. That's the only, that was the intent of the analysis. Mm -hmm. And I concluded that if gas went from $3 to $4, whoever was reimbursed would have $26 less cash in their pocket at the end of those four months. But the, the cost, the gasoline cost, is still covered in a sense, right? Absolutely, I mean, because you have, if you look at the, that if there's money left over, they do 100 miles. $96 left, right. They have $31 left over that doesn't, has had nothing to do with the, the, the right. fuel. It could be for maintenance. It goes to the insurance, it goes to the upkeep, it goes to the. So these are all fixed costs that don't change if right. you don't, if right. you drive the car or not. Yeah. So you still have plenty, you know, plenty, I'm not going to say plenty, you always have cash. But the 51 cents is actually, if I remember the federal rate, is not just for gas, it is actually a, a rate that's compensate, theoretically compensates you for wear and tear and everything right. else. Right. And the feds will probably increase it, so what it comes Well, they will increase it, and then it, and the gas rate will drop, and you'll be ahead for a short period of time, and that. I, I, I think this is great, Jess, I think we ought to save a copy of that. Mm -hmm. I, I think 51 cents for a limited number of miles is... Is, is more than enough. And so this whole letter about renting a car at forty-four dollars a day seems to be specious and ill-informed. I think from a cost perspective, my sense, is <clears throat> having done a lot of presentations to senior level and board level management, looking for um, justification, authorization to spend money, I think you need to at least present it in a cost perspective, not a, an emotional perspective. The meager reimbursement of the government is hardly technical analysis in my book, but then again, I'm an MBA. So what do I know? Nothing. <laughs> All right. It's not fair. Um, <laughs> we, we, yeah, okay. we'll we'll like, no, we're all set. We got, we got to go back. We have two, two PCSs that were overlooked. We have a highway for a replacement driver, heavy equipment operator. Um, we have Oh, I'm sorry, I take that back. We have the resignation of Stephen Payas at, from the highway department as that heavy equipment operator. Uh, so motion to accept the resignation. There's a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Then there's an application for a posting by the highway department for a truck driver heavy equipment operator. Um, it looks like the rate would be somewhere between 1393 and 1593, of course, depending on his licensing. Is there a mo motion to allow the highway department to post for the job position? So moved. <coughs> Second. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Five, six, three, six. And then, okay. Then we have a PCF for Jonathan Sismonic, date of hire 10 18 10. He is highway department. He's going from 1393 to 1528 because he's the license stipends are going up. He's got 35 cents an hour for catch basins and a dollar per hour for class B CDL per the union contract. So second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No 
lastly, we have a David Dressel part-time resignation, 120, effective date, 12011. Move to accept his resignation. Oh, this is the police officer that resigned to go maybe to Westfield. Mm -hmm. Motion to accept his resignation. All in favor? Second and aye. All in aye. favor? Aye. aye. Um, that takes care of that. Action list, Diana? I don't have any action items. Okay. Jennifer Cutting, anything, anything? No, nothing. I just, can I just say a couple things about the town hall? I, I won't go into all the punch list items. Those are being worked on. Um, in terms of the Council on Aging, I did want to let you know that Ed is moving them over. He's moved some stuff over today, and I think he's going to move the rest over next week. They had their first osteo process class upstairs today in the meeting room and that worked out fine. So we'll be able to house them on a temporary basis until the senior center issues are resolved. Um, everything's out of the No, not everything. No, not everything's but we yeah, we're working on re we're working on resolution. Um, boxes we're gonna get moved. At least that was when I spoke the boxes were getting moved and the, and the file cabinets were staying. Um, I think Ed said because they had so little they decided to move it all and we have found storage places in here. Um, I just want to mention on the grand opening, I just want to throw this out to you as an idea. How, I know you talked about Memorial Day, but there was some kind of, a little bit contention on that. Is there any chance you'd be willing to consider May 14th? How about old home days, Jess? May 14th is um, the weekend before annual town meeting. Um, I was, it's a Saturday. I was thinking, I mean, again, we have to go another couple weeks to make sure these issues are resolved, but in anticipation of that being done, um, I was thinking we could have, you know, a grand opening here from say like 9 to 11 and do tours and have a, you know, a dedication or whatnot. And, um, but it's, it's out early enough where I think we could plan and invite the people we want to if we decide in the next couple weeks. Um, I'm thinking like in the morning. It's a Saturday and, you know, presumably hopefully it'd be nice. I don't think people are going to stop and, you know, stay all day, but just to walk through the town hall and come for the dedication and maybe go on a tour and, you know, do a, do just, I'm thinking just before town meeting, so when people get to town meeting, people aren't asking the question, well, what's going on with the building? <laughs> you know, we've kind of had the grand opening and showed people you're that it's need done. You're going to need a budget to do something. You're going to need some money to do some coffee and some. Yeah, you could, you can, um, I did research the law, and you actually can buy food out of your expense budget if it's conducive to a meeting. So in other words, if you're trying to get people to attend a meeting or attend a training or attend something like that, you can. So, and, and D DLS agreed with that, but. Is Saturday better than a Sunday? I think a Saturday is better than a Sunday. Yeah, just because people are out and about anyway, and then they might just stop in and, you know, take a tour if they're just but running just errands or. Well, I was thinking of doing, yeah, like of planning some kind of event, not just, I'm just trying to say it's, I didn't, wasn't going to get crazy with it, but, you know, having the ledgers, calling legislators to see if they would, you know, have a dedication ceremony from like 9 to 9.30, and then just have an open house. But it would give you, you guys a chance, it'd be after the election, it would give you guys a chance to talk to people before the annual town meeting if people have questions. We could, depending on the, on the staff, I was thinking we'd open the town hall so, you know, if people wanted to come in and... You know, at the annual town meeting, we're going to have an open house on such and such day and people that do town meetings. Mm -hmm. you ask the staff to come in. What are you going to do about paying? Uh, I don't know. I'm not, I, you know, I'm just... Uh, Thinking of asking them instead of coming in maybe that weeknight from six to eight, they come in on Saturday from nine to eleven. Could, could we have a could we have an opening on um, a weeknight? You could. I, I mean, I'm just thinking. They have the offices open and so that everybody's here. How about the night of the election? You have an open house at that point. People come up. Yeah, you're gonna have no because I. It's gonna be really point. crazy with That's everything. Crazy. Yeah, I mean that's true. People would be here if you wanted to. Maybe if you did it the weekend, like or a week. The two, a It'd have to not be on a Tuesday because we're booked up through annual town meeting. <laughs> no, and I say, that's what I'm saying, but a Tuesday <laughs> but night so we don't run into problems. One, we don't need a lot of time. We don't want to pay anybody to open it. But have it on a Tuesday night, you know, and then say from 7 to 7.30 was the opening ceremony and then you can conduct your business and yeah. take a tour. I, that's fine. I'm just... We don't have a, a BOS meeting. Right. And, and if we did it on a night later in the year, when it, not later in the year, but later in the period when it's like it's maybe sunny by 7, 7.30 yeah. or, or daylight so that we can be outside on the front steps and May is a good night. 
Yeah, I, I just thought we didn't want to wait too much longer. We've been having, you know, like legislators, um, like uh, Dan O'Brien came here from Co uh, from Canapic's office, and he was like, oh, I didn't realize you opened the building. Like, did you already have the grand opening? Because, you know, we might want to come. <laughs> and I'm like, first, we haven't had it yet. <laughs> how about the first Tuesday that the building is open in June? The push it is not quite so far, but so that we can have daylight. And then invite. June 7th. Tuesday, June 7th. And how about, I'm trying to think how you can generate some interest, whether you, you send things to the various business in town that we're having an open house, would they like to showcase their wares, their food? <laughs> well, we've had meetings before. We had that. No, I'm saying yeah. in, in seven o'clock. Yeah. I mean, I think the, the other thing is the Building Reuse Committee wanted to invite the architect and all the people involved in the project, the architect, project manager, the contractor. <laughs> you know, there's still, maybe they won't even want to come at that point. <laughs> but um, so that's all when Gary had said, you know, let us know. They just wanted to make sure those folks were we invited. We've got to come to a resolution. Does anybody want to express an opinion? Come to a resolution tonight? No, I, I just threw out that date of the 14th, and I was saying just sort of think, keep it in your mind. If you want to plan something, we got to start soon. If you want to push it off till June, then you can. Well, I'm thinking, I was saying, I was thinking then you could be outside. The problem with the Saturday is I don't know if you're going to draw anybody, but on a Tuesday night if we're open and they, there's a lot of, you know, I don't know how we can encourage them to come, give them a discount on their you taxes. Have the centers, you have to get the seniors You've got to get the seniors in here. And if the seniors how about a band? <laughs> huh? How about a band? <laughs> like the senior, like the seniors, well, we're going to have a band. That's too, because then the choral group starts pl yeah. playing over in the park and we can yeah. have them, ask yeah. them to come here. So. Yeah, By June, the coral group will be the whatever they are, if we plan. All right. right. All right. We'll talk about it more. Thank Anybody you. Anybody want to make a motion? Move to adjourn. All in favor.